So the, the, the full title of my paper is After Diaspora Beyond Citizenship, Staking Claim in Blackness as a Universal in Post-Holocaust Germany. And so I'm asking, what does it mean to think of life after diaspora and beyond citizenship? What does the perspective from post-war and post war Berlin reveal about these positions? The point of this paper is not to argue that citizenship is no longer important as an analytical category or social ideal or that diasporas no longer exist. Instead, this project simultaneously thinks diasporas and citizenship beyond their limits. It examines citizenship beyond the nation state and diaspora beyond ethnic purity or, or politics of return. While citizenship as a philosophical concept holds up laudable social ends, in its actual practice, it cannot get beyond the reality of exclusionary outcomes. The politics and analytics of diaspora, while seemingly limited to a particularly restricted transnational ethnic or ethno-religious network, also produces its own unexpected affiliations and un unanticipated connections. Thinking from the perspective of Berlin and beginning with the example of post-World War II African-American military occupation in a broader global context, in this project I am working through some of the unanticipated implications of what Stuart Hall refers to as the promise of diasporic aesthetics. I begin arguing that African-American cultural forms not only gained an unex unexpected, unanticipated profundity via the actual presence of African-American soldiers and their children, but also that the actual presence created possibilities for a new access and new opportunities for identification and enunciation, that is, places and positions from which to speak. In Hall's formulation, diasporic aesthetics are configured via artistic practices such as filmmaking and photography that allow black subjects to reassemble a past in order to imagine a different future. He says, quote, we have been trying to theorize identity as constituted not outside but within representation, and hence of cinema not as a second order mirror held up to reflect what already exists, but as that form of representation, which is able to constitute us as new kinds of subjects and thereby enable us to discover places from which to speak. Hall goes on to note that the point of these aesthetics is not to create an, okay, yeah, sorry. Um, Hall goes on to note that the point of these aesthetics is not to create an authentic singular past, but to construct those points of identification, those positionalities we call in retrospect our cultural identities. Hall concludes with Franz Fanon's words linking cultural identity to national culture, quote, and this he's quoting Fanon here, a national culture is the whole body of efforts made by a people in the sphere of thought to describe, justify, and raise the action through which that people has created itself and keeps itself in existence, close quote. In this formulation, Hall's notion of diasporic aesthetics offers new possibilities for transnational affiliation and support for subjects who might not otherwise otherwise have, have, have who might otherwise have no social anchor in the nationalized context of contemporary life. This includes African diasporic subjects who are, in, by definition, living under conditions of displacement. Hall's formulation, however, does not account for the possibility that unanticipated audience find power in an aesthetics that never had them in mind. It uses the nation as a frame, the very frame that excludes in the first place, instead of getting beyond. Moving from the immediate post-war period to the present, my project examines the relationship between contemporary aesthetics, post-war African-American military occupation, and European citizenship. How does the performance of and desire for black American bodies figure in relation to the European perpetration and memorialization of Nazi-led Holocaust? In which ways has blackness become a means to articulate contemporary racism amidst a backdrop in which racism continues, to dominate, continues in the dominant imagination to always mean genocide, of a guilty conscience that has turned into atonement that now lets Europe off the hook for contemporary racism and even past perpetration, including the continually absent memory of the violence of colonial perpetration, whose legacy persists in the present. And this is something we were talking about in the, in the discussion today. 